So, you want to know how to create a fire lighting effect for your video. Well, you could just use fire. No, don't do that. It's too dangerous. But don't worry, we're going to show you some cool ways to create affordable fire lighting effects that gaffers use on film sets. And in the process, you're going to learn how to make other lighting effects as well. So it's a win-win. Honey, I smell smoke. Oh, sorry, honey. I lit a match for my YouTube video. If you like this video, please subscribe and click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. Lighting and film and video has two purposes. To illuminate our set so that we can get an exposure to record the shot, and to create a mood and feeling that fits the scene. How we do the latter is we observe the world around us, and then we simulate that with the lights that we have, using lighting techniques. This real-world lighting already has a look and feel that are familiar to our viewers. The trick is to convincingly recreate it using the equipment that we have. We might use a Kukuloris uh, to create a Venetian blind effect. We might use color temperature orange gel on a lamp to make it look like tungsten. And then we have unique forms of light that come from TV, computer monitor, a candle or fireplace, uh, the emergency lights of a police car or an ambulance. And we use something called effect lights to simulate them. Effect lights usually simulate some light off camera. These types of lights have two main characteristics that we have to convincingly recreate in order for it to work. One is a certain color or color range, and the other is a fluctuating light level. Those two characteristics are all that separate a TV from a fireplace lighting effect. Let me show you. We can spend a whole video or two on color, so we're gonna keep this simple. On the white balance scale, right, we know that uh, daylight is on the blue end of the scale around 5,000, 5,500 Kelvin. And tungsten is on the lower orange end around 3,200. So what is the color temperature of fire? It's even lower, around 1,800. Very orange, maybe even a little red in there. Now we've got to keep in mind what white balance setting we have on the camera. This is very important. Normally during the day, uh, in daylight, I'm setting my camera to uh, 5,000, 5,500 Kelvin. Uh, the daylight setting. At night, I'm usually shooting at 3200K tungsten. So, with my camera set at 3200K white balance tungsten, if I use a fire effect bulb that's already set to 1800K uh, K Kelvin, I've got a nice fire effect. It's the right orangish red that I'm looking for. And you'll notice I'm using, uh, I have an edge light on me. I'm using a daylight bulb that's 5,000 Kelvin. So that is blue and gives me a, a kind of like a moon effect. Now I could use a standard tungsten bulb for my firelight, but that's 3200K and I'm shooting at 3200K. So I need to warm it up. So I can use a piece of full CTO or even two pieces to bring it down to around that 1800-ish range. For more info on CTO color temperature, orange and also CTB, the blue, uh, check out the video we made on it. Uh, it goes in a lot more detail. Now, if I take that daylight bulb, 5000 Kelvin, and use that in my light instead of a fire bulb, now I have a TV monitor light. The other part of the effect is changing the light level, creating the flicker. Normally when you set a light, like your key, your fill, or ambient whatnot, uh, you set the light level and it doesn't change. But whether you're shooting candle or roaring fireplace, the light level has to change constantly and in a random way to be convincing. How do we do that? For a candle at its simplest, you hook up a small light or a dimmer, mark your low and high points, and then randomly adjust the light level during your shot. A fireplace, unlike a candle single flame, is made up of many flames, so a bigger light source like a soft box can work. For a better flicker effect, you could use two lights, each on their own dimmer. Some gaffers use three bulbs or light units with one left on steady for a constant base light level, and then they flicker the other two. The important part of the effect here is the amount of flicker. For a candle, too much won't seem right. 
for roaring fire, too little may not work. Shoot tests. Remember, all you're doing is randomly adjusting the light level. The rest is helped by the color and good audio to really sell the effect. All that dimming by hand, uh, take after take, can get pretty old, so technology to the rescue. Flicker dimmers do uh, the flickering for you. Their electronic devices, a popular one, is made uh, by Magic Gadgets. Um, they're used on film sets all the time and they allow you to set the high and low points just like a, a regular dimmer and you can set the speed of the flicker. Their units range from handling 2,000 watts and up to like 24,000 uh, to handle the high uh, wattage lamps that are uh, the standard in the film biz. I was reading an interview recently with DJ Stimson, who is a cinematographer on What We Do in the Shadows, the feature and the TV show, which both are hilarious, by the way. And he mentioned using these flame effect LED bulbs in the lanterns on set. Now, he talked about how they normally shy away on a film set from a consumer brand uh, LED practical bulbs for fear of flicker. But in this case, I mean, flickering is the whole point. He didn't say what bulbs he used, but I did some research and found these. So this is the uh, Omoko uh, from Petigo. Uh, they were highly rated. Uh, of course, that's for consumer use, but I've been testing them and uh, they're fantastic. They have three settings, uh, flame, continuous on, and breathing. And breathing is basically just slowly dimming up and down. You cycle through the settings by just as I was doing, turning the bulb on and off. And by default, over time, it'll just default right back to the beginning, which is the flame effect. Now, obviously, it's very uh, orange right now. This is 1800 Kelvin, and that's because I'm shooting at 5500. But uh, if I'm shooting uh, with my camera, white balance at tungsten, 3200, it's, they're perfect. I put these in a soft box, but you can put them on a socket adapter like I did here and just connect them right to a uh, extension cord or, or with a switch. You can also put uh, two or more of them right into a power strip. You can't adjust the speed of the flicker, and if it's too intense for what you need, you could use two bulbs and just have one on continuous and the other flickering. The continuous will sort of dampen the flicker a little bit. Two bulbs currently, $10 US, great deal, awesome bulbs. The other cool effect LED light I've discovered uh, and I'm really impressed with is from Spiffy Gear and that is the Q6 wearable light. Spiffy Gear is not a paid sponsor. They liked our show enough that they sent us the Q6 lights uh, to check out with no strings attached. So they had no influence on anything we had to say and using them for firelight effects and other lighting effects. They have two uh, different versions, the bicolor and the RGB. They're small, they snap around objects, or magnetic so you can stick them up to metal objects and include adhesive backed metal discs to use on non-magnetic surfaces. The bicolor model has eight white balance settings between 2700 and 6500 K and also has a set of effects that include breathing, candle, and others. These are 95 CRI color rendering index and professional level bicolor where all the LEDs are on at the standard tungsten or daylight settings for max output. The RGB model has three main colors, red, green, and blue, with 15 subcolors and effects like fireworks, TV, and police. You can purchase single or triple mounts for them that work on cold shoes or onto standard quarter inch screw stands. They are USB chargeable and can last anywhere from one to eight hours depending on what light level you set them at. They use continuous charging so you can hook them up to a USB source like a USB power brick and they will power it for a long time. This means they are great for outdoor shoots. Yes, they're small with 28 LEDs each, but they do put out a lot of light. Great for an effect at night in medium to close up shots. They do have a frost diffusion over them, which I think is perfect because I want max output, but if you'd rather have more diffusion, not a problem. Because they're magnetic, I just use magnets on the back to attach a piece of diffusion to them. Ooh. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful. Don't forget to check out our other videos. We have over 130 at this point. 
And if you have any specific questions about this video, uh, please do leave them in the comments. We try our best to get back to everybody and answer questions to the best of our ability.